Hey, and welcome to the Schuster Show. My name's Gary, and I'll be your host today. Up next in how do we make that into a video? Uh, we have Tak Hatanaka from Blacktown City Council. He's the digital communication officer over there in Australia, and he's been able to basically upskill his team to making more video content, um, and specifically using the phone to do the video content. And we just want to find out his insights about how did he go about doing that? What does his team think? And more importantly, what does the 350,000 residents in Blacktown think about the video content that he's been producing? So without further ado, Tak, what's going on? What's up, Gary? Um, you, that was very relevant. You just did a quick cutaway of myself while you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, that was not planned. Yeah, man, it's good to have you. Look at us, man. This looks like a proper podcast now. That's it. We've got to make it professional. Yeah, we got to we got to represent here. Okay, so let's just get right into the questions here, right? So um, first of all, how did you get your team started with making video? How did you derive with using it on your phone? And how did you, I guess, how did you get them confident with this new uh, this new skill set? Yeah, for sure. You know, it wasn't actually an easy task at first to motivate the team to create video content. You know, everyone already has their full-time role. And on top of that, now you're asking them to create videos. Um, you know, and a lot of these people have little to no experience in creating videos. And now you're going, hey, make a video for me, get it ready, uh, get it edited, put it up on our social media channels. So initially, uh, the, the, all our team members got trained via the Shoot Star workshops, but we also implemented monthly video catch-ups across all our content creators. There's almost 15 of us. And in that meeting, we talk about, you know, upcoming video opportunities and also review the videos that we've done that previous month. And it's just a great platform to discuss all the things, uh, video and also to support one another. So that way we can kind of look at what we've done and say, hey, maybe you could have done it this way or we really liked what you did about that. Um, and that's really been a positive uh, meeting for, for all of us creating content. But we also provided our content creators with the shoot star assist, which greatly improved the confidence all around because that gave them the opportunity for more of a personalized lesson with a professional. And that way you could see firsthand how to execute their content, you know, like framing, storyboarding and such. And that that and after that shoot star assist, they're ready to go on their own. They kind of know what to do and how to execute it. Nice. So it sounds to me like outside of just using like uh, our regular onboarding stuff and Schuster Assist, which shout out to our Schuster Assist stuff, our Schuster Assist staff, uh, what we do is we we help our clients kind of for the first few videos go and shadow them and give them tips as they do those things. Um, and it sounds like it really works in terms of helping build that confidence for you guys. But you also mentioned having that weekly or monthly catch up to review the, the stuff that you guys do and kind of share ideas. And I think this is really relevant to then build the confidence level. Um, now, when it comes to capturing cutaways, how did you guys start planning for those? How did you develop them? And then how did you get your teams to, you know, get more comfortable with uh, creating this type of uh, content in align with the messages? I mean, without cutaways, you can only imagine how boring a video could be. Um, there's only so many angles of a person you can really get. However, like uh, as, as in those meetings, we talk about the most, why we should take cutaways first is obvious, obvious question. Oh, sorry. Obvious answers to make it more engaging. Um, and it can really start to paint the story. What I try to tell the team is don't try to overcomplicate a cutaway, you know, just because you've got a gimbal or, um, you, everyone's confident using a phone. Some shots don't really need movement. If your subject matter is already moving then just keep it static, keep it still. And sometimes the most simple sort of cutaways are the most effective. And, you know, the team really take on board sort of my feedback and shoot starts feedback um, in creating an effective cutaway. And yeah, ever since um, sort of after doing their first video, they've just nonstop creating videos with plenty of cutaways. Nice. Now, I'm going to go into the question of your target audience. So you're obviously making uh, content for uh, the residents of your town uh, and getting them involved in all that kind of stuff. So what has been kind of the response uh, that you've had from switching from your traditional uh, communication efforts into this like more video platform? And, and what, what did that do to the confidence of the creators that made those videos? 
You know, we're, we're one of the largest councils in Australia, the largest in Sydney. There's 350,000 residents across Blacktown City. And for, for them, we want to provide really good visual, engaging video content. And we know that the content that we're creating is getting more and more likes, more and more comments. You know, people prefer to see, you know, an effective video with nice cutaways, professionally shot in an SLR or a mobile phone, opposed to a Shutterstock image. You know, a video is always going to outperform um, any of those sort of stock imagery that a lot of people or companies use. And, you know, we're really proud of the, the fact that we've been able to create such high level content for our people in the community. Yeah, that's good. That's really good news to hear. And I remember in kind of our, our pre-interview session, you did also mention that since you went digital with the video, you happen to have, uh, you know, a, a couple of people maybe even outside of town, outside of your city, cap got got got. Uh, got the video in front of them and you started getting um, some uh, awareness even outside of your city, right? Can you, can you give us a little bit more about that? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, ever since COVID and a lot of our events and workshops had to be cancelled, we all thought, hey, does everything need to be cancelled physically? Or now that everyone's more and more online, do we create, you know, digital workshops, digital events, digital performances? And across Blacktown City Council, we're all sort of contributing to that. Uh, Blacktown Arts are putting together all sorts of uh, music performances and arts. And a lot of their content is now reaching people internationally. Um, something that wouldn't have happened um, unless we started becoming more digital and creating more sort of video content for the community. Yeah, that's sick, bro. Sick, because I, I've, I've actually seen a lot of that stuff happening with a lot of the clients that I uh, advise and so forth. Uh, they're forced to really bring it digitally. And as they do that, there's this this, this learning curve that everyone's got to go through. But once you're past that, uh, exactly what you said, like the ability to then talk and communicate further and also probably cheaper than actually hosting a live event. Um, not saying that we should totally cancel live events when COVID's over, but it's just a different method of communication. And it just opens up the, the world uh, to then chime in into the conversation. Now, up next, uh, we actually have a video that Tak has shared with us uh, that he's created uh, for an art gallery over down there um, in his city. Uh, I would like to show you that because it's basically all cutaways and is very aligned with uh, his message and he's also kind of included a special guest in that video so i'm not going to explain too much about it let's just roll that video and show the audiences what you're able to do with just purely cutaways have you met zoe our friendly teen dog she gets to be one of the first blacktown residents to premiere the latest exhibition held at the blacktown art center Zoe gets scared of flickering lights, but she seems to really enjoy the latest installation of Amplified. Zoe's favourite thing to do is to snuggle up, and what better way to do that than by watching the latest short film festival, Blacktown Shorts. Zoe hopes everyone can visit the Blacktown Arts Centre over the next few weeks to enjoy some of the amazing work from our local artists. All right, we're back. Great video talk. I liked seeing all those different cutaways that you had. I noticed that you used the variety of different shot sizes uh, and you also used different movements. I saw you even shot like the, the projection. So you got that like cool flare going on, which kind of added that like cool look to the video. And again, using a dog, normally I recommend people do not use animals for your films, uh, but I think the way you used uh, the dog to represent someone coming into the store and you didn't get the dog to do very specific uh, actions, it made it a lot easier to follow. And who doesn't love dogs, right? So we're, we're running a little bit out of time here. So I don't, I wish we could ask more questions here because I think this is really important for audiences, but we do have to keep on schedule. Tuck, uh, I want to give you one last uh, moment to then say uh, to all the viewers that are watching right now, do you have any further advice, further experiences that you've, you've experienced throughout uh, trying to skill up your teams? Because I think a lot of the viewers today are going to run into those scenarios. 
What kind of advice do you have for them that they can take away with uh, right after the show? Yeah, for sure. I mean, my advice is to let everyone know like how important video content is now. Um, everyone's got their full-time job. Now you're asking them to create videos and some people might not feel like they have the time to do it. Um, however, if you sort of take it up the executive line and show them how effective video content is by you know reports of engagement on social media channels um, compared to other sort of posts that you've done in the past, then um, you, they'll sort of give you more time to start uh, prioritizing video as a method of communications. Nice. Thank you, Tuck. Uh, so I, I captured a little bit of sound problem there. So let me just reiterate what Tuck was saying. Uh, so Tuck was also mentioning to really just go out and try it, right? Because after once you've done, got a couple of videos under the belt, you've published it and you see the results and those results are massively more effective than your traditional methods, then it kind of helps build the confidence to then do more videos and maybe at a managing uh, managerial level, uh, maybe you can shift your priorities from your regular traditional communication efforts into a more video communication effort uh, and also give more bandwidth for those video creators to then create that content because there is more value uh, and feedback stuff coming out from those videos. Did I summarize that fairly well, Tak? Not exactly that, man. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah, just video, you just got to let everyone know that how important video content is then they'll let you uh, go out and create content, give you more time to prioritize that. Nice. <laughs> All right, Tuck, we're gonna run out of time here, so I gotta chow out, but thank you for coming in. I appreciate uh, you giving your time and insights and helping the audience understand what you are have went through and faced and the outcomes of uh, enabling your teams with more video content. Thanks, Tuck. See you later. No, thanks, Gary. Thanks for having me. 